Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm gonna do an overview of the tools that I carry in my Canon MX3. And I need your help because I'm not an expert. I'm learning as I go, just like a lot of you guys. I'm just an average Joe. And um, the season is coming, so I'm packing up my stuff and I'm putting the stuff that goes in my car for those emergencies, for when you break down, for when you have an issue. And I'm going over my kit and I thought I should share this with you guys. And I, actually, I want you guys' input. And um, give me your feedback. Comment down below on what tools you carry in your car. So one thing for sure is I don't carry a spare. And um, I'll get to that in a second and why I don't. But I don't carry a spare and I don't carry a jack. But I think I carry pretty much everything else that I may need as far as tools and like plug patches and stuff like that to change my belt. But um, other than that, other than a spare tire and a jack, um, I don't think I'm missing anything. And if I am, hit me down in the comments and let me know where it is. So let's get started. So I got these bags from PRP. They make these underseat bags that go underneath the seats of the Canon MX3. Um, in the front seats, underneath those seats, I have the subwoofers from my Stage 5 uh, stereo. But in the rear seats, I do carry my tools. So I like keeping everything as low as possible. Um, and I know I got all that stuff on the top there. But I don't. that's one of the reasons I don't carry spare. I don't like putting weight too high. Um, just less chance of rolling over, in my opinion. So actually more of a chance i i want to lessen the chance by uh keeping everything down low so these are underneath the seats and let's go over the tools so first things first is this generic 3 8 socket set and this one's made by milwaukee i'm a fan of milwaukee tools they got great warranty and um you know i'm a big fan so this is their square drive 3 8 uh pretty simple you got two extensions a ratchet and your sockets from uh six to 19 millimeter and then here i have a wrench set that I got and this is um these are actually wrenches that I first started out with as a new guy at my local Chevy dealership and this is a craftsman set from about nine millimeter or excuse me seven millimeter all the way to 21 and, and then I got this uh, pouch it's a Dickies pouch that I got after the fact and I put them in there to have them nice and tight and rolled up so I could fit them in this bag so that's another thing I got I got some generic pliers and uh, adjustable wrenches here some locking pliers so we got your long needle nose. These are great for when you uh, got a blowout of your belt and you need to get the belt out of the secondary clutch or the primary clutch and you pull that stuff out. Uh, instead of using your hands, go ahead and use one of these. These uh, long ones are actually really good to grab the uh, old pieces of belt. Then you got some locking pliers. You never know when you're gonna need some of these. Uh, they grip nice and tight. You know, everybody should have a set of these on the go. Then you got your uh, angle cutters here. These are pretty much used to cut off zip ties or cut off plugs when I plug a tire. Uh, hopefully I never have to use these, but you know, it happens. I got an adjustable wrench. This is like a eight inch adjustable wrench or 10 inch. Uh, I think it says eight inch there. Um, you never know when you're gonna need one of these, so keep that handy. I got a breaker bar because that ratchet ain't very long and sometimes a breaker bar is needed. So I got one of these. And then I got a generic little pry bar here. Nothing special, but it should get the job done for certain situations. I got a uh, Milwaukee, I think it's like a 10 in one or six in one screwdriver, seven in one. Um, it's got multiple screwdriver bits. Man, it's starting to rust. And um, yeah, it's different, you know, Phillips and flathead and whatnot, and it's kind of ratcheting. So you never know. I just keep this stuff just in case. So that's one bag. So this bag goes underneath my passenger seat. Um, and this is the bag that I kind of rarely use um, unless, you know, I start getting bolts loose or I need to replace something that broke or something like that you know it's probably really going to be using any of these tools but they are there just in case i need them just in case one of my buddies breaks down and i need the tools i can help them fix whatever they got going on so moving on to this side i got another prp bag um this prp bag fits underneath the driver rear seat and this is the bag that i'm probably going to use most likely to uh, pull somebody out or uh, replace my belt so i got a spare belt in here so this is like a three inch strap. I rarely use this because I have another strap in the glove box, but this is a strap that I would use probably if someone got a broken arm or something and I need to pull them from the back and uh, from their front bumper. So, so I would attach this to somebody's front bumper and attach this to my rear bumper and then I would pull them out like that. So this is, you know, very rarely used. I do have a winch on the front and I'll get to the other strap in just a second. So I have that in this bag. I also have one of these uh, soft shackles to uh, again attach to somebody's rear bumper using this uh, tie down rope or this, this pull rope, pull strap. God damn it. 
anyways and then I have one of these um, just generic um, tie down straps and this is good for you know if someone breaks an arm again or a front arm or whatever you can tie the arm up so it doesn't drag and you could you know tow that vehicle out so this works you know fairly good um, I don't use it often again but it's there if I need it so let's get on to the tools that I use uh, when I'm replacing my belt and these are pretty much all the tools I need uh, with the exception of this one I also use this one when I uh, replace my belt but um, I do have a spare belt this is a badass belt is it oh no it's a world's best belt from uh, Evo or from G-Boost whatever you want to call it they're just rebranded um, this belt I have one in the car right now I don't expect that one to break very uh, soon but um, I do have a backup just in case so I got that and then I have the tool to remove the belt or to actually to push this uh, secondary clutch uh, in order to get the belt off or on and that's this tool made by AIS and it works pretty good you screw it on and then you kind of just lever it over and it's easy to replace the belt so I love this tool it makes it easy and last but not least I got a ratchet so this is a 3 8 ratchet the reason I went with 3 8 is because my socket set is 3 8 so I had to find an adapter that was 3 8 drive but quarter inch shank so I can use this bit set so this bit set has all the torques that I'm going to need um, I use these bits um, mainly to remove the belt and um, any other bits that I might need and they'll be in there hexes and Phillips and whatnot so this is a cool little bit set and um, that's pretty much it for these two bags now um, I'm gonna leave a link to most of the stuff in the description but not everything because I actually don't remember where I got some of the stuff like these pliers these pliers are probably like 10 years old and I don't remember where I got them from it might have been uh, a local tool store near me they're made by SNK but yeah so I'll leave a link to most of the stuff and um, the other stuff I'll probably leave links to uh, you know comparable items so so that goes underneath the seats. I keep the weight down on the car as much as I can. And um, the lower the weight, the better. So let's go on to some of the stuff I carry in my center bag. Or actually, let's go into the stuff I carry in my glove box because that's important too. Those are my go-to items. So let's check it out. Car still looking good from the wash. So um, I do have other storage options in this car. And that would be every door has a bag. Um, the bags are awesome, but I kind of leave them free of any stuff. Uh, because you know if I have occupants like my wife will put her glasses on here her goggles her phone and any other kind of stuff in the bags or waters because the waters don't you know they have couple the car has cup holders but the waters don't stay in there you know they kind of fall out so I leave the bags free of any tools or any go-to things I'm gonna use they're mainly for storage for example on my bag I usually keep my phone my wallet my keys and sometimes a tablet if I'm going high speed and I know the tablet might fly off on high speed uh, uh, riding I put the tablet in the bag so in the glove box I do carry this uh I think it's called like a stump puller or a tree puller it's also a three inch roll but it's pretty heavy duty it's not very long I'm gonna leave a link to this one this is the one I mainly use to uh, help somebody out when I have um, my winch so when I use my winch I will pretty much just shackle the winch to this guy and then to the rope and pull whoever I need to pull out out so this one's not very long it's not as long as the red rope I keep underneath the seat um, but it's long enough to wrap around a uh, car and you know do its job so this works great and actually has some soft um, material in it and it doesn't you know scratch up the bumpers and whatnot and then in here I also keep some zip ties they're not the biggest and um, I need to get some bigger ones I mean a lot bigger ones um, I'm looking at the Harbor Freight ones they're like two feet long and those are probably the ones I'm, I'm gonna get because those are good for uh, hopping plugs stay on the tires and limp your ass back to uh, home so I got another strap in here just in case uh, for whatever may be needed I got a can of WD-40 I don't know why I got this in here. If you got a squeak, it's not a big deal, but I mean, I get annoyed and I just spray something down real quick. It's not the best thing. It's probably better to have like a dry lube, but I mean, look how cute this little can is. I had to get it. So that's pretty much it for the glove box. And let me show you guys what I carry in the center bag because I got quite a few things in there and um, you're gonna like it. Check it out. The RC cars. Look at the damage this thing got. That thing got bent. This thing cracked. The arm bent. I'm going to ham at work all right so in the can -Am x3 center bag so this is bag is made by can -Am. um not an aftermarket company i do carry a fairly large flashlight uh this one also is made by milwaukee the reason i like milwaukee flashlights and milwaukee tools is because i use the battery platform for everything so if my ratchet i forget to uh charge the battery i have this battery as backup if I forget to charge that battery, I have the battery in this one to uh, use. 
So this is a tire uh, pressure inflator or compressor, whatever you want to call it. Uh, compact inflator is what Milwaukee calls it. And this does the job, believe it or not, it works great and it's small and compact, fits in the center bag and is out of the way. Um, I do carry a plug kit. Uh, this one's made by Rock, Rock Tricks Auto Accessories. Yeah, so I'll leave a link to this one too. I do keep it in a zipper bag because when I wash the car, you know, I don't want this thing getting messed up. We're getting full of water. So, all right, so in this kit comes everything you're gonna need. They give you valve stems, valve cores, a core removal tool, um, a set of pliers, your rubber cement, a tire inflator gauge, some gloves, uh, the puncture tools and the spiral um, rod, whatever it is called, I don't know what it's called, uh, in order to make your plug. And then they give you a couple of plugs here. Now I added to this kit because, you know, I have some laying around. I think I added these, but it comes with these. Um, it's not a ton, but it should be able to get you by even if you got a fairly large puncture. And um, I carry this just in case that happens. So, so like I said, I don't carry a spare. And um, the reason for that is I just don't want the weight up top. Um, and it's very rare you get a puncture, but when you do, you know, maybe I will regret it, but um, I don't go on long rides. I don't go for like three hour rides, you know, one way. It's usually an hour to an hour and a half out from camp and then we return. So that's why I don't carry a spare. I don't feel I need one. If I do get a flat and I can't fix it using this, uh, you know, flat tire repair kit, then I'll pretty much have my buddy go back uh, to camp, get my spare wheel, because I do carry a spare wheel, but I carry it in the toy hauler and um, then he'll come back and then we'll fix it then. So I don't carry it on me, but I do have one as backup in the trailer. So I depend on this to do the job. Now, if you guys think this is a bad decision by me, um, let me know. Just keep in mind, I don't travel three to four hours on one ride one way. It's usually up to three hours, but it's like an hour and a half there and an hour and a half back, you know? So that's the tire kit that I have. Um, one thing I do want to add to this, I do want to get um, more caulking or more of these strips, but um, something that I could use to really plug up a large hole. And then I'm trying to get some very large zip ties, probably like two feet long, uh, pretty thick, like three eighths inch thick. And um, I can use those to wrap around the wheel and keep that plug on there. So whatever it takes, um, I limp it somehow, some way back to camp. So that's that. And then the last thing that I do carry, and I think everybody should carry one, is this. This is a first aid kit. So this first aid kit I found on Amazon. Um, a lot of good reviews on it. I've actually never opened it. Um, I just, you know, put it in a Ziploc bag and I threw it in here in the car. Um, so everybody's gotta have one of these, you know. I didn't go through it. I didn't check it like crazy, but I mean, I am aware of the stuff that could happen. My buddy Chewy's cousin lost a finger. Um, I've heard countless people freaking bang up their elbows real bad. Um, well, my wife's cousin, she rolled my car and they had some cuts and they were bleeding pretty bad. So um, first aid kit, you got to have one. And I recommend you have one in your car, in your uh, truck that you're hauling your car in and in your trailer. So you don't have to you know, scramble to find your first aid kit. This is very important. And last but not least, I do carry a fire extinguisher and where I carry it is I think the only place you should carry it. And if I'm wrong, let me know, but I carry it right below my leg so it's strapped in there pretty tough i've never had it come loose it's hard to see in there but there it is uh right next to the uh, seat frame here but i carry the fire extinguisher right there because what good does it do you back in the uh back roll cage if your thing's already on fire you're not gonna want to touch that fire extinguisher it's probably gonna be hot so i carry it near me and uh, it's actually a good spot it's out of the way and again down low as much weight as i can get down low the better for me the better for the car the better and the less chance i have of rolling over so um yeah so those are the things that i got on my car there are some things i want to add um i still contemplate about going back and forth about a spare wheel a spare tire but i just don't know which way to do it so the only way that i would carry a spare wheel on this car in my opinion is that i could actually remove one of these seats and strap a spare wheel right here so i do got 32s and i wouldn't be able to fit it in the bed there's just not enough room and i don't want to carry it up high like i said too much uh, weight up high is going to cause you to have a better chance of rolling over so if i'm going to go on a three to four hour trip um i would want to put the uh wheel back here so i probably remove the seat put the spare wheel right here on the driver's side or maybe the passenger side to counter my weight and um maybe that's the best way to do it but 
I haven't figured that out yet. I haven't figured out how it would strap the wheel, what would be the best uh, mounting options. Um, but let me know what you guys think. Um, same thing with the jack. I like to mount it nice and low. Don't want to put stuff up high. So with my style of riding, I like to do a lot of high speed desert. Uh, I don't really do a lot of trails, slow trails. So yeah, if you're doing slow trails, I guess it doesn't matter to stick it up high. You're not going that fast. But if you're going high speed desert like I am, um, I don't want to put it up high. It's Cause sometimes you're, you're going 50 miles an hour and you hit some, you know, pretty deep ruts. Um, you might start going a little sideways and the less weight you have up top and down low, or you have it down low, uh, the better chance you have of uh, saving the car from uh, actually rolling over. So that's pretty much what I got. That's my uh, toolkit. Let me know what you guys think. Give me some options of what I might do about the spare wheel situation and what tools or what uh, components I might be missing for my toolkit. So let me know in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching and peace out. See you guys next time.